Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to try to explain these connections as best as I can. Um, they might be pretty confusing, or they might be straightforward, but let's have a go at that. All right, so here's this module I made with the uh, 555 timer and all the major circuitry you find in the schematic. Uh, so a couple of the wires jutting out here. First of all, simplest are your positive and negative leads, and those directly correspond uh, to the positive and negative over there. So this, so this will be attached to power supply number one. These two leads. Okay. Now the two wires coming out of this end are for the MOSFETs. So here's that uh, resistor uh, diode connection to number three and if we look carefully what comes out of that is that goes and it goes to the gate of the MOSFET okay so that's what that wire is for so this yellow wire will go to the gate of the MOSFET and then we have another wire over here and this black wire would correspond to the wire here that's going up to negative so if you look carefully that's going to the source of the MOSFET so that's all for the module so actually let's just plug in the MOSFET right now. So here's our single MOSFET on a rather large heatsink. And so in case you don't know, MOSFETs uh, from left to right, the pinouts are normally gate, drain, and source. Okay, so here we have um, a wire from our diode slash number three pin. So that goes to the gate. And then we have our source, which we said went to the negative of the power supply. So that goes to the source, which is on the other end, and the middle is left the drain. Okay, so let's leave this for now. And now we bring out our flyback. Okay, here's the flyback transformer that we're going to be using. It's a DC flyback transformer. If your flybacks look anything like that, you can guarantee it's a DC. I have a full box of them. These are all DC flybacks. Um, so your primary coil, if you look on the schematic over here, primary coil, it, the schematic says uh, 6 to 12 turns. So you take some uh, thin copper wire and on the outside of your ferrite core you just wind 6 to 12 turns. I've always wound 10, I don't know, it's just a nice number in between. Um, so yeah, so there are 10 turns here and those two wires that are sticking out are your two connections to the primary coil. So let's see where the connections go over here. Okay, so let's see. Here's one end of a primary coil. And remember I said you can cut this off. So one end is going to uh, or the secondary power supply that goes. Uh, I didn't draw it here. So this one goes to our secondary power supply. So okay, so we got our connection over here. So here I already included a wire. And so this goes to our big power supply because we're going to pump about 30 to 40 volts in it. So let's plug that in right now. This is the guy I'm going to be using for that. So let's plug that in so that positive. And where's the other connection to the primary go? Well, the other connection goes to the drain of the MOSFET, that middle piece. Okay. So, also on our connection, we also have this alligator clip. Let's go grab our MOSFET again over here. Oops, that fell off, so this would go to the middle. And where's the, where's the drain again? Okay, so now our MOSFET's all set up. Okay. Now, we need to connect the other power supply. I made this kind of cable. It's just a positive negative lead with banana clip uh, ends. And if you notice on the negative I have this alligator clip sticking out. So this is the common negative. Um, so to this let's plug in our actual driver and positive and negative. Okay, so now the driver is plugged in. So this can go to one supply. And this goes to the 12 volt supply, the end of this. And what am I using? I'm using my trusty trusty ATX power supply. So let's 
plug that in. Okay, so we clip 12 volts to here. And our ground to here. And then we need one more connection, and that is the ground from our big supply over here. Clips right in here, and goes to that joint connection with the alligator clip. And then I'll show you how you put the audio in. So, once again, here's our module. Okay, and you see this analog jack? Now, what you do is I've actually connected so that the interior of this jack connects from pin 3, or sorry, connects through that 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor to pin 5 over here. The audio input goes 100 nanofarad to pin 5. Okay. So, and, and the, the outer cuff of that goes to ground. It just literally goes and it just goes to meet, you know, this ground, uh, general, general ground. Um, so, after that, you could literally just take a, an auxiliary cable and just connect it through here. And it's the same effect as, you know, soldering on actual headphone wires, but it's a lot neater and it's removable. Vivaldi's Four Seasons, why not? Plug that audio jack into the headphone jack of the boombox. Let's play. Let's increase the voltage at the drain. Alright, so for better sound, let's take a look at which pin is the high voltage in. Easiest way to do that, uh, to do that is turn on the flyback transformer and see which one it prefers to arc to. Alright, that must be it then. So after you have that, then you just attach a piece of wire to it. that. And there we have. High voltage out and high voltage in. Just makes the sound a lot better. You could bend it and change the shape. You know when you uh, get the right capacitance, when you see lots of ozone and it screeches, like this, from far away too. When you turn the frequency low, you get really, really spaced out, huge arcs. And that's only at 20 volts. You see what resonance capacitance can do? Let's increase it. See how that looks in the dark.
That's 12 volts. You can see the corona already on that. Let's boost that up way, 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 way up. It's an arc distance of around 14 centimeters. So this is what a really well-tuned um, 555 timer flyback driver constitutes when you get those loud, loud ozonated arcs.